All right, in this step, we're going to go over how to download files from Azure, Azure Blob Storage, with Ipswich's Move It Automation 2018. So there's a few prereqs you're going to need to fill if you're going to follow along with this. First is, you're obviously going to need Move It Automation 2018, and you're going to need the Web Admin install, so that's a separate feature you want to make sure to install. That That's what we're going to be using a lot in here. You want to need rights and automation, obviously. You want to need a storage account, and you need that service principle set up in Azure so that automation can authenticate to Azure. That's done by Azure Credentials, and there is a good step suggestion that I refer to is how to create and authenticate to Azure with a service principle using PowerShell. That's another good snip. There's another good step in uh, the library about how to set up an Azure virtual machine with What's Up Gold. That kind of does the same thing, so those are some good suggestions for you. And the scenario is just going to be, we're going to, to create a PowerShell script. And this PowerShell script is just going to download some files from a storage container in your Azure subscription to a local file on the, uh, the Move It Automation server. So first thing we have to do is we have to create that PowerShell script. Now this PowerShell script is created just for Move It. Most of it is just the general PowerShell, but there are a few variables in here uh, with methods on uh, various objects that uh, you are going to need to know because they are Move It specific. But starting from the top here, 21 through 36, that's downloading the Azure RM PowerShell module only if it's required. So this is a good condition of logic, which since we are running this on the Move It automation server itself, this just does a check to make sure that the, uh, the module is there. And if it's not, then it goes ahead and solves the prerequisite NuGet uh, version and gets it all downloaded and, and all good. The next piece of this script is we ensure that these required task parameters are there. So we will be creating a task in Move It Automation that will have various parameters in it. Now, we don't, don't necessarily have to have parameters. We could statically put in this stuff in the script itself, but that's never a good idea in case we want to change it up to a different service account or a, uh, a container. Uh, we can do that. But in this region, I'm essentially defining all of the parameters that I want. So I'm going to have three different parameters for our Move It Automation task. And here I'm checking to make sure they're there. I'm doing that by running the MIA client variable. I'm then referencing the MIA client object and then the MI get task param method. The MIA client is a Move It Automation specific object. PowerShell knows what that is when it runs within Move It Automation. So if I were to just run this now, it would just blow up because it would have no idea what MIA client. So MI get task param is the one that I'm using. And I'm setting those instead of just running MI get task param to get the value for all those parameters. I'm using set variable here to actually create variables in my PowerShell script so I can access those easily. And then the next region, I'm authenticating to Azure. I'm first checking to see if we are authenticated um, on 51. And then I'm setting up a uh, credential. And the credential is your service principal ID and password. So that's going to be your enterprise application ID, which um, you should have already set up. And then on 55, that's where I finally do that connection, authenticate to my subscription that I want, specify my subscription ID and my tenant ID, and I'm good to go. And then next up is when I actually do the downloading. So first up, I have to create the storage context. Here's where I use the value of the Azure storage account and the Azure storage key, those task parameters that I brought in earlier. And then on line 61 through 65, that's where I have that for each loop. This is where I list out all of the files inside of the Azure container that I provided via my task parameters. And then and I'm going through here, on 62 there, here's why I have another MIA client uh, method, the MI cache file name. This creates a temporary file in cache internally inside of Move It Automation so it understands that we're working with files. 63 there is where I run get Azure storage blob content. That's where I actually go out and download it. And then on 64, I have another MIA client object reference, this time MI add file. This adds the file. This essentially converts the file in Azure to a local Move It Automation cached file so I can understand that we're working with those files again. And then on 67 through 71, I have the catch block. So if you notice up here on 38, it starts out with try. I have a try catch block. And in PowerShell, if the script errors in that try block, if anything errors out, it's going to run into this catch block. 
and then I'm using the MIA client reference again, and this time set error code and set error description. It makes Move It Automation understand that PowerShell threw an error. If not, it would just say success all the time because it doesn't know how to interpret a PowerShell error. So that this, those lines do that. All right, so now that we have the PowerShell script all created, now we can actually put it into Move It Automation. There's a couple ways to do that. We can upload a, an entire script or we can copy and paste. Because I'm lazy, I don't want to create another script, I will copy and paste. You could do it any different way. So to do that, I go up here to Scripts, and then I go to Add Script, and then I will call this, oh, I don't know, Download Azure Blob Storage. It's going to be a PowerShell script, and we have script templates in here that Ipswich provides, but uh, we're not going to need those this time. So here's where we copy and paste. We could just paste that in, or we could do import script file, which allows us to import an entire file. One thing I like about Move It uh, Automation is that it gives you the nice syntax highlighting. So notice that we have the nice syntax highlighting here in PowerShell. So it does know the PowerShell um, syntax, so that's good. All right, so now that we have the script, we can go over here to Tasks. We need to create a new task. Go over to Add Task, New Task. Give it a friendly name, a friendly enough text tips demo. It's very creative. Traditional, we're not going to do anything fancy with loops, conditional blocks. We can do all kinds of that stuff, but we're not going to now. Add task. All right, here's where we set these steps. Since this is just going to be a single script, we could have broken this out into lots of different scripts. We can do this lots of different ways, but just to get you started, we just have that one script. So to invoke a PowerShell script, we need to create a step here. And we're not going to have a source because technically the script is the source. We are gathering all those files within the, the script itself. So we need to create a process step. Here's where we define the script that we created. So we choose our Azure blog store. Uh-oh. You can tell I've been blogging too much. <laughs> Azure blog storage. Oh, well, we'll leave it. All right, so now here is where we provide the task parameters. This is where I was telling you about in the script. Here on line 40, here's where those required MI params are. So we need to provide these or it's going to error out. All right, so first off, we need the Azure storage account parameter name. And the Azure storage account, let's go over here. And it, I'm already in the portal here, and it is going to be tech snips. So I will go ahead and put in tech snips, add parameter. This next one we need, we need Azure storage key. So we will copy and paste that one out. And then to find your storage key, you go to the Azure storage account here, tech snips, scroll down until you see access keys here in settings, and you want to pick the first key here. So I will copy this out, and then I will go back to move it, paste that in, make sure I have one more parameter, Azure container, that is the Azure container name. Click on our storage account here and go down to containers, and it's going to be move it demo. Going in here, you see we just have one file, thumbnail.png. That's going to be the file that we're going to download. So now that we add that, Azure container, the Azure container is move it demo. All right, now we have all of the parameters defined. So we hit save, and then now we are good to go. We had our process step. And now we need to define the destination. Where is it actually going to go? So notice that in here, we didn't actually define where it was going to go. We have, we were downloading it, we'd get Azure blob content, but we see, we said MIA client, MI add file, cache file name here. We didn't actually specify where it was going, where we, we just had a file name. So it's inside of move at the moment, and we're going to tell move it where it's supposed to go. So to do that, we can add a destination step. So we go up to step and then go to destination. And we're just going to save it to a local folder here. We can choose any kind of different host we want. You can That may be another snip for another day, setting up different hosts. But for now, this is just going to be on the local file system of the server itself. So click Next, and let's just save it to the root of C. That's just telling us the folder where the file is going to go. So now we can add destination, and now we have run a custom script and save it to the local file system. So now we have our test set up. So now we need to run it. So we go out here and then click on the ellipsis here next to our tech steps demo task we just created. Then click run task now. And then you see it's going to run the script. It's going to go through a few things, authenticate, run our script. 
and then it should drop it into the, the root of C. So if this works, notice that the files that are processed were one and the file size was 49.9K. So it looks like it actually did work. So let's verify that. Since we dropped it on the root of C, I'm on the server right now. And now notice thumbnail.png is here and it rounded it up to 50K. But just keep me honest, I'll delete it and I will run it again and pop up, voila, and it popped up. So it's downloading it from Azure every time and putting it in there. All right, so that has been a snip on how to download files from Azure Blob Storage using Ipswich Move It Automation 2018.